Luke chapter number 19, and we're going to start reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, said unto him Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be the guest with the man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the, and stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from the man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is to come to seek and to save that which was lost. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for the reading of your word. Lord, we thank you for the good song service. Thank you for just everything you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for the good jail services this morning. Lord, we just ask a special blessing upon our pastor as he's away at Brother Jerry Allen's church. Lord, you just help him. Lord, just help him be in his strength and encouragement to those people. Lord, we see revival there break out this morning. Lord, I ask you just help us now. Lord, be with what you've laid upon my heart to preach. Lord, you know that just help give it, help me give it to your people here the way, same way you gave it to me, Lord, to be a help and encourage to us all, Lord, and most of all, if anybody here this morning is lost, to help them see their need for salvation, for it's everlasting too late, as you just meet with us, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first thing I'm going to look at by way of introduction, as we just see in verse number one, it talks about the passage, how Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Can I say that we see a lot of things at different times that we'll look in scripture and we'll always talk about, Jesus passed by. And Jesus passed through an area, or Jesus was going through a place. Jesus never passes through without a reason for going through there. He never went through any place, Brother Phil, by accident. He always had a reason for passing by. Jesus passes through here this morning and passes by you. He's got a reason. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's between you and God. But Jesus has a reason on why he passed by. And we know here he's passing by in order to see Zacchaeus. So not only do we see the passage, but that brings us to the person that we see we're talking about. And behold, there was a certain man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And we know it gets down, and we see in verse number 7, they talk about uh, that the fact that he was a sinner. So we're dealing with Zacchaeus here. We're dealing with this publican. We're dealing with this uh, 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 guy who, who many would just call a thief and took from other people. And we see when Zacchaeus later on tells what he's going to give back. So we see the person here that we're talking about. But now look at the press in verse number 3. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was a little of stature. You know, there's many times that I'm reading stuff and, and, and I'm, I'm like other people. I have a very wild and vivid imagination. There's a lot of times I read and I get to thinking, just one time, Brother Doug, I would like to see what that press is like. Just one time I would like to pull into church after jail and really not have a parking spot. I would like to pull in and really just look in here for Sunday school and see the doors open and chairs set back. Kind of like we used to when you had the old building. You know, we started getting full and you had to set chairs up, but we just have no desire. And I'm not talking about lost people coming in. If we just had all the members of Emmanuel Baptist Church here, imagine the press we would have. And that's what Zacchaeus is dealing with here. He had a press that he had to deal with. And too many times when we see uh, uh, the crowds, so to speak, they will keep us away. You might not like Black Friday shopping because of the crowds. I think it's fun. I enjoy it. You might not like other things because of the crowd. But should nothing keep us from seeing Jesus? Shouldn't matter the crowd, good, big, small. That should not matter. But we see the press here that we was dealing with. That press created a problem. But we see that problem get solved in verse number 4. And it says, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. We see that problem. We see how he solves that problem. And we're, that's, that's what the message will be about. We'll get there in just a little bit. But how many times do we desire to seek something from Jesus? How many times do we desire to seek something in the service and we allow a problem to creep in? Whether it's somebody's not here or whether we're worried about somebody uh, interrupting service or we, well, the preacher didn't preach what we thought he should preach or we didn't like his tie that he had on or we didn't like the fact he let this person sing or this person testify and we allow that to keep us from seeing the Lord. We allow that to keep us from getting the help that God would have us to get that evening or that day or whatever it may be. It's amazing the excuses that we will use on why we won't partake in a service. You know, whatever it may be. We can point fingers and blame whoever it is, but when it all comes down to it, it's all about a heart problem. 
If we truly desire the things of God, we truly desire, as Brother Jordan talked about a minute ago, revival. We could have revival. We could have revival. But we don't truly desire those things. We like to use fancy words, and we like to say certain things, but when it comes down to it, we are closer, unfortunately, to the group that is just plain out pitiful in verse number 7. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be the guest of a man that is a sinner. How pitiful it is that these people, supposed to be spiritual, supposed to be religious, he's going to spend time with a sinner. What a loser he is. That's how we act too many times. What does he have to want to come here? Look at that person. Look what they did. They did this and they did that and were so quick to point fingers at people. That said in the devotion, I believe it was this past uh, Monday, uh, talking about sitting in that window looking out at the world. We're so quick to point fingers at everybody else. Your brother Sammy even talked about it Wednesday night preaching. We're so quick to say, boy, if so-and-so had been here, they really needed this. If my, sp if my spouse had been here, if my best friend had been, or whoever had been here, if they had been here, God could have really helped them. What about searching ourselves? Too many times we're looking to point at others, but we see the pardon received in verses 9 and 10. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so as much as he is also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is to come to, to, come to seek and to save that which was lost. We see the salvation because of what Zacchaeus had talked about in verse number 8. Zacchaeus had, had said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and I have taken anything by man of false accusation, I restore him fourfold. We see Zacchaeus get right with God and get right, want to get right with the people, and we see the salvation and come to his house. But what I want to preach on is found back again in verses number 3 and 4. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Zacchaeus had heard Jesus was coming by. He no doubt had heard some of the things that Jesus had done up to that point. He had heard some of the miracles, no doubt, and all different things that had happened. And he wasn't going to let anything keep him from seeing Jesus. And what I want to preach on this morning is, what's keeping you from Jesus? If you're here this morning and lost, what's keeping you lost? What's keeping you in that, that state of not willing to give your heart to Jesus Christ? If you're here this morning and saved, what's keeping you from having the relationship with Jesus that he wants to have? We claim at times that, that we love the Lord and we have, want to have this certain relationship with him, but do we live that way? What is keeping us from Jesus? If we're saved, what's keeping us from having that relationship that he, and he, he wants us to have with him? If we're lost, what's keeping you from uh, giving your life to Jesus Christ? Can I say, first off, too many times what's keeping us from Jesus is strictly our attendance. Now, I know, understand, that we're good. Oh, here's Brother Josh. He's going to start talking about faithfulness. We hear that enough from Brother Doug. Well, just that's fine. Just bear with me here for a minute. Let me first say, if you're a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church, I, I don't hardly ever do this, but I'm going to do this. Brother Doug, I have a question for you. Is there any chance you can walk out here tonight and tell Miss Sheila, I'll see you again next Sunday morning? Is that going to fly? Is that going to be okay? That's not going to be okay. Why do we treat the Lord the same way? Why do we walk out on a Sunday morning, we go to church, and we, and we know in our hearts and our minds, I ain't going back till next Sunday morning. Why do we think that should fly with God? And see, when we do that, how he, he, Brother Doug said, he goes, that's not going to fly with us, Miss Sheila. That, that's not going to help the relationship, Brother Phil. So how are we to have the relationship that we need with Jesus Christ if that's our attitude toward that? Not only just our attendance here, what about our attendance even in just, uh, uh, um, uh, just in, our, in our Bible study, just even being at church? We can be here. I'm going to get in trouble right here because Bella's going to ask me after a while why I sat down. I've, I've had this before. So many times we can come and we're sitting here, but are we truly here? If we was to have somebody standing at the back door and they follow you out to your car, and they let you get in your car, and you say, okay, now i got a quiz. i got five questions from today's message. How many of those five will we get right? right. See, because we're, we're, we're here, but we're not really here. Right. I've, I've seen this meme one time, and it, it, it was a husband sitting in Brother Phil, and he says, why is it my wife seems to car, start all of our conversations with, are you even listening to me? <laughs> That's how we are with God. 
That's how we are with God. Have you ever sat down and tried to do, we get so busy in the world and we get to this going on and that going on and we'll sit down, we're going to read a devotion and we're going to sit down and we're going to read scripture and we sit down to read and we close up our Bible and we couldn't tell you the first thing we read. Sure. How was our attendance? How is that affecting our relationship with Jesus Christ? How can we say we are truly seeking him if that's how we are? If our attendance to even just those things, like I said, it's not just about being here, but being present with him when we go to read, when we open up and want to get involved in the scripture, just, just certain things. Do we truly, do we just show up or are we wholeheartedly given to those things? See, when we, what is keeping us from him too many times is our attendance in those things. Oh, I, I read my Bible. Good. What'd you read? Uh, well, I, it was out of, uh, 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 it was back in the New Testament. Uh, I read out of Luke. Okay, well, what was it? Same thing as I said, you know, if we was asked five questions about service. If I was asked five questions on what Brother Sammy preached on Wednesday night, could we answer any of those five? We could tell you if somebody told a funny joke, or we could tell you whatever it may be, and that's going to be it. Unfortunately, too many times we could say, well, Brother Josh talked about the fact that Bella told him if he did a good job, he'd get ice cream. And then he talked about the fact that he sat down and laughed, and, and that's about it. He preached out of Zacchaeus. I remember Zacchaeus because I remember Zacchaeus when we was young, and, and Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and we remember certain things like that. But what did we really preach? What did we really get out of it? What's keeping us from Jesus? Too many times it's our attendance. Not only that, too many times it's our arrogance. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, and verses 7 and 8, it says, And at that time Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubbams a huge host, with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. So he come and he's told Asa, he said, Remember when you went against, uh, when you went against the Ethiopians and uh, the Ethiopians and you went against all them and how God delivered you? But now he's not. Why? Because Asa wasn't dependent upon God anymore. Right. He was relying on other people. He was relying on his own wisdom, so to speak. He was relying on what he thought was best instead of relying on God. Right. That's how we get sometimes. Oh, I can handle this. Yeah. I don't need God. I'll show you. We're just arrogant. There's no other. We, we can try to um, sugarcoat it all we want, but it comes down to it. We're just arrogant. We think we know what's best. You know, as, as Brother Larry, you say, my right to my claim to myself. Yep. I know what's going on in my life. I know the best step for me, what to take next is, and I know how to handle things. And we don't want to give things to God. We, why is it that we see so many times our first step in seeking help and things for our life is the things that we will try instead of turning it over to God first? It's amazing. We'll read self-help books and we'll do all this kind of stuff instead of just immediately saying, God, I need your help. God, I need you. To, you do, it might be reading a book. God, I need you to show me what book I need to read. God, I need you to show me who I need to go talk to about this thing. You know, there's, there's certain things. We just have certain places we need to go. Sure. I had something yesterday, Brother Phil. It happened on my truck. For whatever reason, I decided to trust a dealership to work on my vehicle. And, of course, I go and I let them work on it and I get back because it's something I didn't want to have to do, Brother Jordan. I didn't have the ability to get my truck up in the air, so I took it to the Ford dealership and said, here, do this. And then I go out drive yesterday, and now i got some kind of grinding noise in my, in, in my truck. So the first thing you do is you come in and say, Brother Peter, got a question for you. <laughs> now I even stumped Brother Peter. And see, that's because sometimes even us here on this world, we can be stumped by things. Even the smartest people we know when it comes to vehicles, we can stump them. It's the same thing when it comes to spiritual matters or anything else. Sometimes we just got to go to God. Right. Right. Ask Him for help. Instead of being so arrogant about things, oh, I got this handled. I can take care of it. Yeah. See, our arrogance too many times gets in our way. Sure. Keeps us from where we need to be. Keeps us from that relationship with God. Because God wants us just to be willing to, to give it all to Him and trust Him. And instead of us saying, I got this. I, got I, I, know, I know what I need to do here. No, we don't. We have no idea. We, we don't know what tomorrow holds, much less what our future holds. And our arrogance keeps us from where we need to be with Jesus. The third thing, turn with me over to Luke chapter number 12. Luke chapter number 12. Can I say this as you're turning there? I asked, we sat down back there and I said, man, I said, everybody was still shaking hands. And Brother Jordan had her quit playing music. I said, he's trying to be out here by 1130 this morning. He's trying to make sure he can watch the live stream, maybe with Brother Sammy. I said, he, he knew who was preaching this morning. Luke chapter number 12, I want us to look down at verse number 16. What's keeping you from Jesus? And your attendance, your arrogance, 
Or the third thing, too many times, it's our achievements. Luke chapter number 12, down to verse number 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say unto the soul, Soul, thou hast made goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou art full this night, thou shalt be required. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall thou things be, and when thou hast provided? See, it so is he that layeth up treasure for himself, that is not rich toward God. Too many times our achievements keep us from the things of God. Isn't it amazing how we see people turn out in the house of God when they have problems? Isn't it amazing we have something that happens in their lives, and boy, they'll just come in in droves. You know, remember back uh, September the 11th, the churches were just filled, and everybody having problems, and everybody wanting to come, and you see stock market crash, and all these different times, people just come in in droves. Marital problems, and we'll run to church, and have this problem, we'll run to church. But boy, as long as everything's going good, can't find them with the bloodhound. As long as everything's going good, we think, see, I knew I had this all under control. I knew I had this exactly how I, I got everything handled. I got plenty of money in the bank. I got food on my table. I got a, a roof over my head. Got all everything I need. And our achievements keep us from the things of God. Because we fail to realize sometimes all that can be gone tomorrow. Right. Don't have to be tomorrow. It can be the very next minute. It can be the very next moment. All those things can be gone. But see, we just choose not to think like that because of our arrogance that we just talked about. We think we got it all figured out, and I, I got this good job, or I got this, or I got that, and everything's going good, and we don't see our need for salvation. Why do you think he tells disciples it's easier for a rich man to go, or easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter in the kingdom of heaven? Because we just don't see our need. Because of that arrogance and the fact of what they have achieved, we don't see our need for God. What's keeping us from Jesus? I only got two more things. Better slow down, Brother Jordan. Can I say it doesn't matter how many notes I take, no matter what I do. I am like, look, if, if, if you ever listen to live stream or listen to other things, or if you ever had other people, you know Brother Sidney comes. If you watch Brother Sidney, hardly ever preaches over 30 minutes. He gave us a CD bound there from Berean Baptist Church, and I've been listening to it in my vehicle. And, and I believe Brother uh, Sidney preached, I believe it was about 32 minutes, Brother Ray. It's the longest I think I've ever heard him. He's almost always 30 minutes. I remember we used to do podcast, had, listen to certain podcasts or whatever. So I'm just like him. Just short, sweet, to the point, Brother Phil, right? That's how Brother Phil is over to jail. He'll tell you. The fourth thing, what's keeping us from Jesus? Too many times it's our attitude towards Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why then do we not pay attention to all of it? Go back to the attendance thing. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. Well, that don't, that don't apply to me. I've got this going on or i got that going on or whatever it may be. That don't apply to me. Why is it that we can take God's Word? Look, I tell them this all the time at jail. Same thing applies here. You can't celebrate and eat the great Reese eggs and everything coming up at Easter time and buy the nice pretty shirts and buy nice new dresses and celebrate Easter. You can't give out presents at Christmas time and celebrate the birth of Christ and do those kind of things if you're not going to believe at all. We don't get to pick and choose what we want to believe. The Bible tells us what we're supposed to do. It tells us how we're supposed to live our life. It tells us the attitude we're supposed to have. It tells us what the things that we're supposed to take place in our life. We don't get to pick and choose, well, I'll believe this because I think that's good. No. But too many times that's our attitude towards Scripture. Well, he didn't mean that for me. Really? You know, Sister Caitlin sang the song, Who am I that God would do? Who are you to think that you're the exception to the rule? Because too many times that's how we live our life. Oh, well, but, but that, that's what so-and-so needs. That was written to this person or that or whatever it may be. And pick and choose what it is we want to believe. Our attitude towards the scriptures, too many times, we just don't take them serious. We, we, it, we, we believe the book, so to speak, and we'll, we'll read it and we'll do devotions, but we just don't live it because of our attitude towards it. 
not only our attitude toward that, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And we understand completely what's that. The lost person isn't going to read that Bible, and it's not going to have an understanding of it. If we're saved, we should have an understanding of it. But too many times, our attitude towards the Scripture is, we'll take a verse, and we'll read it, whatever it may be, we'll pick something out, I don't understand that, and we close it up, and we stop. You know, that's where the Bible tells us to study and rightly divide and do those kinds of things. Right. Our attitude towards so many times is we, we'll pull certain things out that we think are beneficial. No, it's all. As I already read, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Therefore, it's all can be of a help to us. If we would take time at times to study and, and, and truthfully learn things about it. We had that discussion this morning over at the jail. And I don't remember now what one of the ladies said something. I said, that's why it's important to rightly divide. That's why it's important to, to get you the Bible and open up and say, who is this written to? What's it written about? And what's the purpose of it? And, and who wrote it? And those kind of things and the importance that they have in us being able to understand the Scripture. Because it's all written for us to help us. You, you might pull up something. Look, I, I tell people all the time. You might open up something and might read a verse this morning. It might mean nothing to you at all. It might have no, you like, I have no idea why I read this, why God gave me this. This isn't helping me at all. Only to three hours down the road, find somebody at work that's going through something. You're like, let me tell you what I just read this morning. But see, our attitude towards it too many times, it's not that important. Oh, it's just a book to read. I'll, I'll read it when I get around to it. No. This is where we're to have our relationship with Christ. This is where he's going to be able to speak to us from. This is where he's going to be able to help us from. This is where he's going to be able to give us the help that we can be a help to others at times. Our attitude towards Scripture. There's too many times we just want to blatantly say, I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's too hard for me to understand. Study those things. Begin to look at those things. You know, there's something that that pastor said here a few weeks ago that brought up a question, and, and we started to look at stuff and read stuff and try to see where certain, certain things come from. Study those things and realize the importance of them in our life. What's keeping you from Jesus? The last thing is our acknowledgement of sin. Turn with me back to Genesis chapter 3. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. But I'm going to turn there. Genesis chapter number 3. We all know the story here. What's going on. Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to be wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the, both, and the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Our acknowledgment of sin... Too many times is what keeps us from our relationship that we need to have with Jesus Christ. Because we, too many times, want to do those last three words right there, I hid myself. We think we can hide it. We think if we just sweep it under the rug, nobody's going to know. Well, there's a problem. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. God knows what's in our heart. God knows why we're here this morning. God knows if we have hidden agenda that we're here for this morning. God knows the reason we came. God knows the reason we don't come. God knows that we've came just to be able just to show up and sit here to be able to say that, yep, here I am, I'm at church. Brother Doug wasn't here and I still showed up. Give me a, a big pat on the back this morning. But too many times that's our attitude. And we fail to acknowledge the sin that we have in our life and it keeps us from having a relationship that Jesus, Jesus desires to have. 
See, the Bible tells us that this verse always, you know, kind of uh, uh, puts a uh, kink in our armor, I guess, so to speak. I don't know. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That means if we know we're supposed to be here and we're not, it's sin. It means we know if we're supposed to read our Bible and we don't do it, it's sin. It means we know if we're supposed to live a certain life outside of here and we choose not to do it, it's sin. See, God don't look down. It isn't, it, it isn't just the sinners are the ones over that we went and preached to at the jail this morning. See, somewhere along the line, we've got it in our mind, well, as long as I'm not as bad as Brother Donald, I'm okay. Sorry, you just had to be one sitting there, Brother Donald. <laughs> we'll find those people, like I talked about, sitting in that window. We'll find the people that we can look at and we can compare ourselves to that we're going to be better than. We'll never compare ourselves to the pastor. See, the pastor is usually here every week, and we figure that he studies, and, and we know that he studies, and he gets up and preaches. We're not comparing ourselves to him, Brother Phil. We'll find the person that we see on Sunday mornings, or maybe on Sunday nights. We never see on Wednesday, because we can look at ourselves and say, I'm better than they are. I'm here every service. Regardless of the fact, we can still be here every service and still be sinning. We can be here every service and still be doing things that we're not supposed to be doing. But see, it's our acknowledgement of that is what keeps us from Jesus. Because instead of acknowledging, yep, I've screwed up. I've done things, Brother Phil, I shouldn't have done. I've done things I'm not proud of, and I need to ask God to forgive me and get to that place that I need to be and have that relationship with Him. Instead, I'm not as bad as that person. I'm good. Instead, I'll just sweep everything under the rug and act like everything's okay. Just as Adam and Eve, they, they, for whatever reason, they thought, if we sow these fig leaves together and we'll hide ourselves, God will never know. No, God knows. God, didn't walk, God did not walk through that garden and call unto Adam in verse number 9 and says, Where art thou? Because he didn't know where he was. He knew. He's waiting on him to acknowledge what he had done wrong. God knows where you're at this morning. You can, we can try to hide it. We can try to cover it up. We can try to put the uh, best smelling cologne or, or perfume on we want, but God still knows what we're doing. He still knows where we're at. Still knows what's going on. And it's our failure to acknowledge the sin that we have in our life that keeps us from Him. Because too many times we want to skirt around things and just do just enough to get by. Just enough to get by doesn't work when it comes to the things of God. There are certain things in life we can do just enough to get by that, hey, you might get by, you might get, back, you might get away with it. But when it comes to things of God, that's not how we should live our life. Because if we truly want to see revival, we truly want to see lost ones saved. We took prayer requests Wednesday night, and, 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 and every Wednesday night, probably 85, 90% of the prayer requests, pray for my lost loved ones, pray for my lost family members, pray for the lost. Well, if we want to see them get saved, are we where we need to be? What's keeping us from having the relationship that we need to be? See, too many times we can't just come in and use big fancy words. Oh, yep, I'm concerned about the lost. I'm praying for the lost. I request prayer for them all the time. Are you living that life before them so that they can look at you and see a difference? Sure. One of the ladies in the jail this morning, she said, uh, I believe it was um, her dad's brother, I believe is what she said. She said, my dad's brother, she goes, got saved here a while back. She goes, and you could just see a big change in him, she said, Brother Phil. She said, you could literally see how God had changed his life. She goes, so I know there's hope out there. She goes, I know what he can do for me because I've seen what he did for them. Do we put that forth? Do we put that forth? Or are we too many times just trying to do just enough to get by and our, our failure to acknowledge the sin that we have in our life keeps us from Jesus? Can I say this in closing? And, and, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I, I wouldn't dare embarrass anybody. But you know, too many times we take for granted the things that we have. Our opportunities to come. As I said, I had four ladies this morning. The one said she had been writing grievances because they hadn't got to church, come to church in over a month. We have somebody that's here this morning. How many services in a row have you been able to come now, Sister Janet? Five, six services in a row? Something like that? What a blessing that is absolutely tears her up inside if she can't come. I'll never forget we went and seen her in the hospital when she was there last time and she was talking about how much she just hated not being in service, hated not being able to be here for the youth rally and those kind of things. And we'll just miss not give a second thought. Right. Nothing is going to keep her. It, it, she has to be in the hospital almost dead 
keep her from getting here? What about the rest of us? And I'm not trying to embarrass her. And I, look, I understand at times, but what, what keeps us from Jesus? Too many times we go home this afternoon and, and our, our tires flatten our car and we walk outside and we won't even bother trying to see, hey, can, can calling somebody else, hey, can you come pick me up? I just walked outside, my tires flat, Brother Phil. I don't have time to change it. Is there any way you can come pick me up and get me to church? Now we just say, I have tires flat. I'll fix it in the morning. We go back in the house, turn on a ball game or whatever else may be on. NASCAR is about to start, right, Brother Thad? They'll go in and we'll watch qualifying this afternoon. Whatever it may be. See, we allow too many things to become to come between us and the Lord. Amen. Too many times, it just takes the smallest of things. I was going to say something, and if somebody's watching our live stream, I'll get in so much trouble, so I'm going to stop. Too many times, we'll allow the smallest of things to keep us from the house of God. Why? Just not that important to us. And when he's not that important to us, we can't have the relationship that he wants us to have. I am I'm convinced God wants to send revival. I'm convinced God wants to save our lost. I'm convinced that God wants to do certain things. We just don't want it bad enough. We allow too many things to keep us from God. We allow too many things to keep us from the relationship that he wants to have with us. Zacchaeus wasn't going to have it. He didn't care about the people that were there. He didn't care about anything that was going on. He was going to do anything he could to get to Jesus. Sure. All the way to the point to climb up into a sycamore tree. Yeah. We wouldn't go outside if it's a certain temperature to come to church. We wouldn't come outside if they were calling for it. It might snow on Tuesday, so we're not going to go to church on Sunday because who knows, they might miss it by two days. That sounds foolish when it comes out. But that's how simple... And lame we can be sometimes. The things that we will let keep us from the things of God. How little things we can allow to come in and keep us from having that relationship with Christ. And how do I, I just look, and it, this is just me talking out loud. It amazes to me, back to Sister Janet, how she can come and when she's here, and if Brother Doug or anybody asks for testimonies, I'm just so thankful I'm here. I'm just thankful for everything God's done for me. What? Do we see the health problems and the things she's gone through? And she's just always so thankful for what God's done for her and what God's brought her through. And most of us don't have a tenth of the problems that she has, and we're just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I know we have bad days. Everybody has bad days. What's that got to do with our relationship with Christ? God, I got up on the wrong side of bed this morning. You know what? What's that got to do with me and God? This happened or this happened. That has nothing to do with my relationship with Christ. It shouldn't. But we allow too many things get in our way and keep us from Jesus. When all he wants to do is have a relationship with us that we can get the help that he wants to provide for us. I'm done, Brother Jordan. Come ahead. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.